السلام علیکم گائز دس از می شہریار مبارک اون مائی چینل حسن علی ود انادر ایپیسوڈ اف مائی ٹیل ویل یسٹرڈے اسرائیل فریڈ فور ہاسٹیجز فرام غزہ ود ان آپریشن فرام تھری سائڈز اے وایا لینڈ ایئر اینڈ سی دے مینج ٹو فری فور ہاسٹیجز ایز دیر از ٹیوبلیشن اینڈ ایلیشن ان اسرائیل بٹ ڈیورنگ دیٹ آپریشن they managed to kill 274 innocent Palestinians who have nothing to do with Hamas or with this war going war. They have been target of Israel's relentless and indiscriminate bombing since 7th October 2023, where around 37,084 people have been killed by Israel since 7th October 2023. Around 84,500 people have been severely injured. In yesterday's event, the shelling, the main focus of Israeli bombing shelling and the missile shelling and the missile hits were Central Gaza and the Northern Gaza, Nusriyat and Deir al-Bala, where the heavy casualty took place. The Israelis entered the compound of Nusriyat refugee camp in disguise of displaced Palestinians and they were entering on the Palestinian number plate cars where they so they were more look alike displaced palestinian coming back from rafa or from southern gaza to seek refuge in nusriyat refugee camp but in that disguise they started shelling and bombing from land air and sea in this operation which israel did the commandos in four or some say five helicopters were coming and they landed and then the intense bombing and the shelling and the fire exchange started they managed to kill 274 people and it's still counting they the few of the eyewitnesses or the survivors of the attack says that they were killing everyone despite there were women and children mostly in the in that refu- in that nasriyat refugee camp and deir al bala but they kept on killing everyone their guns didn't stop they kept on kill- killing innocent civilians innocent children and women of gaza in nusriyat and dirbala and the bombing and shelling continues the missiles were flying over the head as one woman recalls the yesterday's horrifying event the missiles were flying across their heads she said there were bodies everywhere in nusriyat and also in deir al bala 89 houses were bombed in nusriyat area in northern gaza and in in, in the central gaza and in same in the northern gaza they bombarded everywhere they bombarded everywhere in deir al bala's area as well and they managed to free only four hostages but they despite that they uh, despite freeing four hostages they were able to kill 274 innocent palestinians who have nothing to do with their war they didn't have taken those palestinian those israelis hostage and they managed to free four and in this last eight months this great israeli army this moral israeli army managed only eight hostages rescues only eight hostages have been rescued in this last eight month and the ground invasion is continuing since 31st october 2023 what does it tell us it tells us that it's a failure of israeli army it is fear of failure of their tactics they couldn't uh, defeat the little group called hamas who do not have much forces much resources like israel who do not have the same guns the same bombs same intelligence and the same manpower as israel ha- israel has so despite that they are still holding on in their own as yesterday israel claimed that they took four hostages they didn't uh, think of uh, they didn't think it necessary to mention that they in uh, during that operation they killed 274 people and it's still counting and many more will die because 700 people are severely injured and the body count is getting up the dead bo- the dead is getting up it's not going down the severely injured are mostly women and children there were not men uh, too many men there in nusriyat and deir al bala's area 
So in Central and Northern Gaza, they managed to again kill around injured or kill 1,000 people in a single strike, in a single operation where they only could rescue four. And they have killed 40 hostages so far in the last eight months. Yesterday, Hamas also claimed that they did free four Israeli hostages, but they only uh, but they also killed some in the result of that operation. Another is important aspect that Israel only manage get to manage eight uh, uh, get to set free eight hostages in last eight months of this war. Hamas released one hundred and five hostages during the ceasefire in November December. They set free one hundred and five hostages. So if the Israeli establishment, Israeli state is serious, they should have talked and tried to free the rest of hostages by talk. Because what they are doing, they are doing nothing. They are just killing Palestinians, innocent Palestinians. And the Al-Aqsa Marta hospital looked like a slaughterhouse as one of the survivee or the doctor recalls it looked like a uh, blood bath it looked like a slaughterhouse blood and bodies everywhere dozens of bodies were in the compound dozens of injured patients were lying in the corridors of al-aqsa martyr hospital and israel have threat to bomb al-aqsa martyr hospital as well so you can imagine what israel is thinking of doing next as <clears throat> many the 274 number is just a start. There are many bodies are uh, buried under the rubble in Nusria and as well in Deir al-Bala. It's a massacre, the EU Joseph Borrell said. It's a massacre. There is no doubt about that. And he urged both sides to talk, talk and sort out the ceasefire agreement because this is not the solution according to jo uh, Joseph Borrell, as he is the only European leader who condemned the amount of death and uh, bloodshed that has been spilled in uh, Deir al-Bala and Nusriyat in central and northern Gaza by Israeli forces. Because rest of the leaders actually congratulate Netanyahu and the IDF on rescuing four soldiers and killing 274 innocent people and injured 700 innocent Palestinians. See, uh, no, Deir al-Bala and Nusriyat faced the majority of the bombing in the yesterday's operation and major, majority of the bombing at yesterday's operation. They killed everybody. As one of the survivors said, that they killed everybody. Israeli forces came in the disguise of civilians and it's a uh, war crime that they have committed that they disguised themselves as displaced Palestinians so they did it in this disguise and they did rescue four Israelis but they killed 274 people plus one more thing I have to say that if you look on those refugees who have uh, who, 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 those hostages who have went back to their homes if you compare them and the Palestinian detainees who or Palestinian prisoners who were freed from Israeli prisons, if you look their medical condition, their body conditions, their physical condition and compare them to the Hamas held hostages, you will see a great, a great difference, a grave difference I have to say. And none, all the host, four hostages are in good medical condition declared by Israeli doctors in Israel. They are back with their families. Good luck to them. But Israel is committing genocide in Gaza. Israel is doing ethnic cleansing of Gaza. They do not care about human life. Palestinian lives do not matter for them. And it do not matter for the Western media or the Western leadership because yesterday's Western media, English, Western English media's coverage of not mentioning 200 dead people yesterday and just telling that Israel freed four uh, hostages in an uh, operation where they disguised themselves as the displaced Palestinians. So it shows that they are doing grave violations of international law and committing genocide in Gaza. 
I don't know what will happen or what is going to happen because tensions are flaring up at the Israel-Lebanon border. There can be a full-fledged full war with Hezbollah as well in coming days. So let's see what happens next. But what Israel is doing in Gaza right now, it's ethnic cleansing. And Benjamin Netanyahu is keeping itself politically relevant by doing this sort of stunt and kill, killing innocent Palestinians in Gaza, across Gaza. Because it is inhumane what he did to save four and kill 274 innocent Palestinian and gravely injured 700 Palestinians and the death count will rise up and it will definitely rise up it will definitely go up 300 and the bodies when they will recover from under the rubble it will be somewhere around 1000 people died or injured in central and northern Gaza in Nusriyat and Deir al-Bala in the end Iranian presidential election which is due on 28th of June this month, they have cleared six of the candidates by the guiding council under the leadership of Supreme Leader Ayatollah, Ayatollah Khamenei. It he applied for the elections to be in the next president to run in the next presidential election, but as their guiding council is the supreme body in the Iranian uh, establishment structure and it's in Iranian government structure, so they cleared six. Uh, candidates who have been cleared by the guiding council and they have disbarred the ex-president, the vocal president, the reformist uh, Ahmadi Nijat, Ali Larajani, the senior nuclear negotiator. He is also being disqualified and Ishaq Jangiri, the former speaker of Iranian parliament. They have been disqualified by the supreme council or by the guiding council. The people who have been approved are Sayyid Al Jalili. He's the front runner. He was also in Iran's Revolutionary Guard. He served there as well. He is uh, one of the favorites of Supreme Leader, as the report tells us. Muhammad Barek, uh, Muhammad Bagheer Al Khaloub is the another one who has been the ex mayor of Tehran. He has been also approved. And he is to be said that he will give the tough time to Sayyid, uh, Sayyid Jalili in the 28th June election, uh, uh, presidential elections race. Uh, the other one who has been clear is Masood al-Pazingshini, Amir Hussain Hashmi, Ali Raza Zakni, Mustafa Parhamudi, uh, Mustafa Parhamudi. The Ali, uh, Razana, uh, the Ali Raza Zakni is the current mayor of uh, Tehran, but the uh, news or the uh, important news is, the analysis is that, that Sayyid Jalili and Muhammad Bagheer, al Khaloub, I think his name was Muhammad Bagheer, they are the front runners and Sayyid Jalili is a hardliner. He, his profile match uh, or and he has been personally liked by the uh, Ali Hamanai, the supreme leader, because supreme leader is around 85, 86 years of age. Ibrahim Raisi, when he was elected, he was uh, favorite to replace Ali Hamanai as the supreme leader of the guiding council or the uh, Rehberi council as they called it in Iran the guiding council to replace Ali Hamnai because Ali Hamnai is now ill and uh, getting older day by day as he is around 85, 86 years of age. So Sayyid Jalili and Muhammad Bagheer will be uh, locking their heads, horns, uh, locking their horns on 28th of June in Iran. This presidential election is uh, Going to be the continuation if, as uh, the analysis say, that if Sayyid Jalili wins, he will continue the Raisi policy as uh, he is more like, he, he is uh, compared uh, or his personality was more uh, like to Muhammad, to Ibrahim Raisi, the former president who died in the helicopter crash. And uh, the uh, next candidates, Mustafa perhaps is one of those who is one of the reformists. But he is not favorite to mean because the council, the guiding council's favorite are 
Sayyid Jalili and the Muhammad Bagheer and these two will perhaps lock their head for the seat of Iranian president and also one of them could be the new supreme leader of Iran's guiding council or of or Iranian Iran's nation replacing Khomeini because Khomeini is passing his days and he is 85 years of age so it will be interesting to see that Iran will elect Sayyid Jalili as a new president or Muhammad Bagheer because these two have a chance to create or get their names in history to be the third supreme leader or the Rahbar as they called it in Iran. So let's see what's happened on 28th of June in Iran and I, we will keep on uh, talking about the Iranian presidential election and we'll see continue closely watching the Iranian presidential election. Long live Islam, long live the people of Palestine, long live the martyrs of Palestine, long live the state of Palestine from the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free. Inshallah, there shall be a Palestinian state very soon on the world map. Allah Hafiz.